Now we're on chapter nine, lesson four, line graphs. And this lesson is gonna be very similar to what we did in 9-3. Um, the main difference is that since it's a line graph, we're gonna be connecting the dots that we um, plot. And so here's our data. We're gonna use this table for questions one through five. This is tracking the hourly temperature. And when the time was 10 a.m., the temperature was eight degrees Fahrenheit. At 11 a.m., an hour later, it rose to 11 p.m., I mean 11 degrees Fahrenheit. At noon, an hour later, it rose to 16 degrees Fahrenheit. An hour later, 27 degrees Fahrenheit, 31 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Fahrenheit, and 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And so they recorded the temperature at 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So they recorded every hour. Keep in mind that if they were to continue this, right now that you see 8 to 11, 11 to 16, 16 to 27, 27 to 31, 31 to 38, 38 to 41, it seems like it's always increasing and it's getting hotter as the day goes. Um, if you were to probably measure this as the time continues to go, keep in mind that it's going to become nighttime and the sun's going to be going down. So the temperature might or might not um, decrease, but like they would. The first thing they did was label their X and their Y. And their X was their time, 10 a.m., which was this. And their Y is the temperature, which is this. You can see when they did the X and the Y, they put it in parentheses in the comma to indicate that it's an ordered pair. And they also took out the symbols, the a.m. and the degrees Fahrenheit. So for one, find the related number pairs for the hourly temperature as ordered pairs. We're going to take the one corresponding up and down, and this will be our X, and this will be our Y, 10, 8. So our next one will be, our X will be 11, which is our first number. We'll have a comma and 11. So 11, comma, 11. Keep in mind that ordered pairs are separated with a comma and put into parentheses. We're going to separate this answer by putting a semicolon, which looks like a comma and a, a dot sticking on top, before putting our next one. Here's our x and our y. 12 is our x, 16 is our y. At noon, it was 12 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to put our semicolon, which is a comma um, with a dot sticking on. 127. 1 is our x, 27 is our y. Our x is telling the time, the y is the temperature, semicolon, 2 and 31, semicolon, x and y, 3 and 38, and last but not least, I feel like I'm running out of room, so I'm going to pop it down here since we have some extra space. 4 and 41. Look at how I put the semicolon at the end of this line and not at the beginning here. Um, if you need to continue on, you can put the semicolon there, not, not floating before the parentheses. Number one, that's all we had to do. We just had to create all of these into ordered pairs. So the data we transferred. What scale would be appropriate to graph the data and what interval would be appropriate to graph the data. Um, the scale is referring to the lowest and the highest numbers um, on your register here. And the interval is what numbers will we count by. Now, our x is gonna be easy. Our x, keep in mind, go left and right. So our x goes from left to right. This is our x-axis. Please label it. And this is our y-axis. And you can see I'm turning my hand a little as I do it. This is our y-axis. Now let's label what our x-axis is. Our x-axis is our time. And our y-axis is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So the scale will be 
what is our smallest number here and what's our largest number here? And of course, we're going to be starting at zero because this is the origin and it starts at zero, zero. Now for the time, since it's a consecutive thing, it goes 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're just going to have each line represent that. So our first one was at 10 a.m. Our second one was at 11. This was at noon. This was at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. And so that was our time. Uh, if I had more space, I would probably put 10 a.m. at the bottom. 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., and 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. Um, you don't have to... I'm, I would recommend adding those so that you know more specifically what time it is, whether it's during the daytime or night. And now... You could see that the y-axis ranges all the way from the smallest number 8 to 41. So if we're going from 8 to 41, think about if we're to count by 1s, okay? So if this next line would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, how would we graph 41 if our largest number is 10? So this is what we're counting by. If we were to count by 1s, it wouldn't make sense. Now let's see if we counted by twos. So after zero, let's try two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. If our highest number is 41 and this goes up to 20, it won't work. And so what I'm counting by, those are what we're calling intervals. Our scale is we need to get all the way to 41 or um, higher. So let's count by threes, zero, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, uh, 27, and 30. Still too little, so we won't count by threes. Next one is fours. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. That one that works out pretty well. So if you want, you could probably use fours. I want to try one more. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Um, looking through this, I would accept two answers. I would accept that the interval could either be counted by fours or counted by fives, whatever you feel most comfortable with. For myself, I'm going to probably use the fives. Um, so you could choose to use four if you want, so your answer is going to be slightly different. But I'm going to use five, ten. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Now, because I used five, my only acceptable answer here would be uh, the interval counts by five. or increases by five. Um, counts by five or interval increases by five. You could choose which term you want to use. Um, if you did four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, just make sure that this says four instead. Um, my scale is from zero to 45. And for yours, yours might go from zero to 40 or zero to 44. Um, but my scale goes from 0 to 45, and I stopped at 45. So you're going to put your lowest number and your highest number for the scale. Now, the next part is make a line graph on the data. This one, you don't need to write anything on here. Your answer will be C graph. And what they want you to do is plot all of these numbers right here and then connect them. So the first one you're plotting is 10, 8. Keep in mind, the 10 tells you you're going to start here, and the 8 tells you you're going to be 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 is close to the 10. 5, 6, 7, 8. It's actually right in the middle of uh, 5 and 10. So I'm going to put 8 right in the middle. So I graph the first one, 10, 8. The next one I'm going to graph is 11, 11. So I start on the right. 
11 and I go up. And 11 is closer to the 10. It's not quite halfway. Then we do 12, 16. So we go to the 12 on the x-axis and 16 on the y-axis. 16 is in between 15 and 20, so it's in between these two lines. Oops, I'm at the 12. Um, 12, 16. And 16 is closer to the 15 than it is the 20. It's not quite in the middle. And then we're doing 127. So we go to the 1 p.m. column. Then we go up until we hit about 27, 25, 26, 27. 27 is just sly shy of the 30. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27 is just shy of halfway. A little bit less than half. Then at 2 p.m. it was 31. There's 31. Then at 3 p.m. it was 38. 35. 38 is right in the middle. And we're on our last one. 4 p.m. it was 41. Just a little bit above the 40. Definitely not quite in the middle. And your next thing to make it a line graph is to connect the dots. Um, you can connect it a little better, especially if you have a ruler and you're not holding the phone. Last one. Use the graph to find the difference in temperature between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Let's circle some of the important words, like difference, 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. When we're finding the difference, think about sum is the answer to an addition problem, difference is the answer to a subtraction problem, Product is the answer to multiplication problem, and quotient is the answer to a division problem. So difference tells you you're going to subtract two numbers. We're going to subtract whatever it was at 11 a.m., and at 11 a.m., it was 11, and at 1 p.m., and at 1 p.m., it was 27, 27, and 27. So we're going to find the difference of 11 and 27. So we'll take 27 and subtract it from 11. And the difference between the two temperatures is 16. But 16 what? 16 degrees Fahrenheit. So your final answer for number 15 is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. The difference between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And you could write that in a complete sentence. Um, you can do something similar to the other ones. Just make sure to circle the key words. For instance, between which two hours did the least change in the temperature occur? So two hours means consecutive. So from 10 o'clock to 11, from 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, did the least change occur? So find the difference of each of them. Subtract the value of 11 minus 8, 11 minus 8. This was a difference of 3. It only increased by 3. What was the increase here, 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 and here? Whichever the smallest increase was will be the answer for this. Um, this was a change of temperature, and you have to find what it was at noon and at 4 p.m., and you're going to do something similar to here. Circle the keywords and find out whether you add, subtract, multiply, or divide the numbers. Um, hope that this helps, and I'll talk to you soon.